stress fractures of the calcaneus. There are four common areas of stress fractures in the foot. The navicular bone, the metatarsals, the proximal fifth metatarsal bone, and the calcaneus. Stress fractures of the calcaneus. It's usually a clinical diagnosis. The patient will have heel pain increased by prolonged weight bearing, and the patient will have difficulty in ambulation and in running. It occurs more in females. Stress fractures of the calcaneus are typically seen in athletes who are overtraining, using improper footwear, or those with mechanical abnormalities. The pain from a cyst fracture appears suddenly and remains constant. The patient may be athletic or a runner. The pain increases with walking. Pain and the swelling on both sides of the heel may be seen. The patient will have diffuse swelling and tenderness with a positive squeeze test. The pain associated with the calcaneal stress fracture can usually be reproduced by squeezing the heel from both sides. It is important not to confuse the pain of a calcaneal stress fracture with the pain associated with other conditions of the heel, such as plantar fasciitis. Always rule out calcaneal stress fracture in a condition of a heel pain. Plantar fasciitis is usually fluctuating. The pain from plantar fasciitis is more severe in the morning when the patient first stands on their feet. Other causes of heel pain and its locations are shown in this diagram. Imaging tests may be helpful to confirm the diagnosis of a stress fracture. Early x-rays are usually negative. The diagnosis is usually done by clinical exam or by obtaining an MRI. Stress fractures may be difficult to see on x-rays until the fracture begins to heal. The x-ray at 46 weeks will show the fracture line on the posterior aspect of the calcaneus as the radio-dense vertical line the fracture is best shown on the lateral X-ray. MRI The sagittal T1 weighted MRI scan will reveal a linear streak of low signal intensity. This is surrounded by an area of hypo-intensity on T1 and the hyper-intensity on T2 due to bone contusion, due to edema and hemorrhage. There will be a dark line on T1. The line will be oriented obliquely or vertically. There will be increased signal in T2. Treatment. Rest. Avoid activities such as running and jumping. Begin swimming to maintain conditioning. And when tenderness is improved, and the subtalar motion returns, the patient can resume activity. Use proper footwear to cushion the heel. Use orthotics. Restrict weight bearing for six weeks. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.